So this right here is the brand new Specialized Levo SL, the latest and greatest model that Specialized offers in the lightweight e-bike category. I've been able to put quite a bit of hours riding into this thing, as well as my other Levo, the full power one, which you guys have seen on the channel before. Now, I've developed kind of a strong opinion about e-bikes, and uh, it might trigger you. Now, I'm gonna start off with a little story first. So if you've ever seen any of my videos, you know that I am a pretty big dude. Like I'm not the average mountain biker. I'm about six foot four, six foot five, somewhere around there. And I weigh, let's just say upwards of 330 pounds. So I'm definitely a pretty big dude just in general. And I've always been that way as well. Even growing up when I was a kid, I was always the kid, you know, the, 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 the one that was weirdly large, towering above all the other kids always being asked if I was like the, you know, the assistant to the teacher or something or the kid that was held back. And no, nope, I was just a really, really big dude growing up. And I just got my growth spur pretty early. And as I got older and started getting interested in mountain biking, um, it kind of held me back in some sense because I would go ride with all my friends and they would all be on their bikes, I'd be on my bike. And I was always the one in the back. Now, even back then I was in pretty good shape but just being much larger, I just never was able to really fully keep up with everybody else around me who was a lot smaller, weighed a lot less than I did. And let's be honest, like had bikes that fit them correctly. I was always on smaller bikes. So fast forward to today, and not much has really changed in that regard. I'm still a lot bigger than most people out there. And when I ride with groups, one of the biggest issues that I face is that I'm always way in the back. Like it's, it's embarrassing sometimes how, how slow I am on the climb compared to a lot of my other friends. And it's always been kind of a setback. However, now that there's been e-bikes on the market, it's kind of been able to level the playing field for me at least, where if I'm on a bike like this, the Levo SL, it's a lightweight e-bike, I'm able to basically put this thing in trail mode or even turbo mode if I want to, and just comfortably sit and keep pace with my friends who are on standard bikes, like just regular pedal bikes. And that's really, really useful for me because I'm not really cheating in that sense, although I kind of am for myself, but I'm able to still be with my friends and have conversations and hang out and really enjoy the things that are important about mountain biking. Before I rode e-bikes, the discouragement that I would get every time I would go on a ride, just not being able to keep up with my friends, you know, and not being able to talk with them and hang out with them, it kind of put a dinger on my mindset on riding where I didn't really have the lust to go out and especially not go out and climb a trail. I hated climbing. I would get to the climb and they would dread, I would dread doing it. I would, this would be like, I would walk up the easy sections. I would just have a bad attitude about it. And yes, it is completely a mindset thing. I totally understand that. But it was really just a big dinger, just kind of on my whole mental when it came to mountain biking. And when I got on an e-bike, the biggest thing that changed, surprisingly, is, you know, when you get an e-bike, people think that you're gonna, you know, get less out of shape and you're gonna become lazy on the climbs and it's gonna get easier and you're never gonna get a workout. When I got my e-bike, what ended up happening was I found myself doing much more miles, which makes sense because you still have a longer range, you can keep going, gives you more energy for a longer period of time, less effort to pedal up hills, so it does make sense, but I ended up doing a lot to the point where I was getting harder, a harder workout on my e-bike than I was on my standard bike. And the reason for that is because I found myself always wanting to go faster and faster up hills. The motor itself gave kind of like the ability for me to feel like I was Superman. So I ended up pushing harder to go up hills on my e-bike, even with the motor, than I would on my standard bike. When I got back on my normal bike from riding my e-bike for long periods of time, I just felt like I wasn't going fast enough. So subconsciously, I found myself pushing even harder than I ever had before on my pedal bike, just knowing how fast I can go uphill on the e-bike. And then in return, I ended up getting an even better workout on my standard bike. So basically what happened was, I got much more fit riding my e-bike and then converting back to my standard pedal bike. I was able to get more riding in. I was going longer distances. I was not walking in sections, like sections that I had always walked. I stopped walking. I was starting to ride uphill, 
because I knew I could do it. I could do it on the e-bike, surely. So of course I could do it on the standard bike. And so it kind of changed my whole entire mindset on, it, on things. It changed my perspective of what was possible for me to do on the climb. And it kind of stayed that way. It like scarred my mind. And so now I've been on this, you know, strange fitness journey, which is weird for me because I, you know, for the first time in my life, I'm like really trying to get super jacked and super ripped. And I can get back on a pedal bike and just have really good fun on the uphills. Like be looking forward to the uphills. So, I mean, I would say e-bikes are the greatest bikes ever made. Now, it might get really controversial here, but outside of my personal fitness, I think that a lot of the rules against e-bikes in certain places are kind of dumb. Now, I genuinely don't understand why e-bikes aren't allowed in certain places, you know, but I've heard the argument that, that e-bikes wear out trails quicker and I, I mean, I'm gonna be honest, I've done a lot of trail building in my time and I ride trails frequently that have a ton of e-bike traffic on them that used to not be e-bike trails and now there's tons of e-bikes riding on them and I, I, I really can't tell a difference. Like there really is no difference in the condition of the trails and I've seen that in multiple parts of the country in different soil types and I, I just don't understand that argument. You know, if I'm really gonna take a step back, I haven't actually heard any, any really truly compelling arguments as to why e-bikes shouldn't be allowed in certain trails or all over the place. So if you do have an opinion or if you have a reason why, something that actually, you know, you can validate, please let me know in the comments. I'm curious to know because I, I just can't see any reasons why they shouldn't be allowed in certain places. So yeah, comment below, let me know. I'm genuinely curious. Enough dilly-dallying, let's ride. before but it is sick the dirt is absolutely perfect right now so good oh Whoa. tight trees through there oh so good oh. not the line for that. Oh, oh, right off the street. Holy moly. Wow. So there you have it. My opinions about e-bikes. I think they're absolutely fantastic. I think they're probably the greatest thing to happen to mountain biking since the seat dropper. And I do mean that genuinely. They've given me the ability to go so much further and so much farther. And before you say, oh, but it's your own fault. You're so big. Like, yeah, yeah I get it. 
I could definitely lose weight and I'm working on it. But in the meantime, this is an absolutely fantastic motivator as well as tool to use to get me to and from, up and down, or back and around. So that's, that's all I have to say. I'll catch you guys on the next one. Make sure to subscribe if you have not already. Hit the like button, and I'll see you guys on the next video. Peace.